Hello, my name is uh, Marco Diaz. I'm not a very big channel, but I grow as I go. So, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how my lightsaber works. Unless there's another one, we'll get to that later. Now, right here, it looks like a lightsaber, obviously. And I have my this is my own saber. I built it on my own with my custom pieces. And you notice the hitbox is a little strange when you pick it up. It's, so the actual hilt isn't the thing you pick up. It's clamped to what you actually pick up, which is a little pipe of any any texture, any color. And it blends in a little bit with the uh, hilt, which is good. So, other than that, we're going to get to the actual gadgets. Okay, now, don't freak out. This is, this is not as hard as you think it is. So, when we get to this, you'll know how this works. So, I'm starting down here. We have this button. Why is it on the bottom? Welp. It's so that this here, when it's activated over here, when this button, this button used to be up here, but now I have it on the bottom for certain reasons. So when when the button's over here, I notice that when I run around with it pointing straight, it kind of glitches and collides with itself, and I don't want that, so I made it as far away as possible, but just so that it's not visible. And why do I not want it to be visible? Well. I don't know. I just want it to be concealed. And I have people find it out and learn about it as it goes on. And this, my new sabers are not published yet. I will publish them one by one when I'm done with this video. Actually, no. I These will be published a little bit after. So, right here is a button. It goes to several outputs. Outputs here. Output there, output there, output here, output up there. Output whatever. And there's this clamp connected to so many things on the top. And to keep it together and stable. And, okay, well, let's... We got the button. The The button's actually connected to this. This animation gizmo right here. And this one right here. Probably wondering why. Well, these two animation gizmos are... The, it's basically like programming here. Like coding. But it's not really coding that I'm using. I'm just using gadgets that the game gives me. Because I'm not that much of a nerd here. So... Right here, this is the animation gizmo for when it's off. So whenever it's off, wherever you place this animation gizmo, it will be right here. So, see, it is off right now. It's currently playing like this, and it'll stay with it. Now, you want to make sure it's in a place where nothing can hit it when you put it in your rooms. So, don't put it down there, or else it's going to glitch out like that all, all, every time it's off. I want it to be at least somewhere where nothing can touch it, like, you can just do this. And it's all the way up there where nothing can touch it. Nothing can get it. But I'm going to bring it back down for tutorial purposes. Now this one is for when it's on, so whenever I press that button, it gets sent over here. This one is clamped to that clamp right there, which is clamped to all this, and it will stick with this which will keep the blade running, and it'll try catching up with this here. But this one is not clamped to it, because if you just move around with it, I don't want to just randomly collide with things. So, I have it like that. It can sit wherever that's not inside a wall, at least. So, now you're probably wondering, what's with the text here? Well, I can show you briefly. This text 
is a period, and it's set to thickness 50. That's, that's the blade. Same with this one here. It's the same thing. So right here, these are in a blade. Maximum is 50, which is why there's two of them on top of each other. And I want it to be at least this long for a lightsaber, so it's not like down here where it's too short. It depends on the lightsaber. But if you want it to be short like Yoda's, then sure, have it down here, have one. But if you want it to be longer, have it up here. And like have a cloned one right here. So and that is longer. And you can make it as long as you want. Depending on how long it is, it depends on how much text there is. Now, obviously you might not want it to be as long as Dimodome's hat. No. If unless you're making a meme, of course. But if you really want it to be that long, please have mercy. Cause you don't want to have all these gadgets on it, because when you spawn it in, it's gonna go haywire. So you don't want it to be infinitely long. If you want an infinitely long lightsaber, I suggest using a rangefinder that detects nothing and having no hitbox. Or you can just have it be a laser pointer. I don't care. But if you want a standard lightsaber that works efficiently, just like any other lightsaber in Star Wars, then you gotta have this right here. You gotta have text. So... The text is more reliable in pistons, believe it or not, because this text right here, you notice there's a hidden pin on it, which is the black one, and uh, over here there's the gizmo, the boolean chip, I set it to not, you need it to have be on not, or else it's going to go weird. So this is connected to a text. You notice it's connected to something else, but we'll get to that a little bit later. This is connected to the green pin on this button here. So whenever it's oh I hit it. Whenever it's on currently, this text will be visible during that time and when you turn the button off it'll go away. So let's let's get to that now. See, now it's there. Now it's not. And yeah, you notice there's a bit of illuminating light. That's this point light right here, obviously. So, if you're more experienced, you will understand what the hell I'm saying. Just saying. So, this is a simple one with the point light. It's not much. You just have to have it clamped to the lightsaber, have the red pin on it connected to the green pin, and that's that step out of the way. Then you're done with that. But, you're not done with the lightsaber, because now we're going to get to the sounds. This is a little more complicated, but not too complicated. So this is probably the ignition, I'm assuming. It I like having it in order like this, so you know which one is which. This one's probably the hit one, this one's the dragging one. Okay, here is the ignition one. This one's connected to the red pin, so whenever it turns on that sound plays and then if if you if the player just decides to do this then the actual lightsaber will kind of do that and keep playing the noise so like let's say I want to get down here I want to press that button it's hard to press I keep grabbing this you can't press it like this. Well, lots of people make that mistake. But I like to press it like this. Yeah, and you see, sometimes it's, you need to have it on... I don't know if you hear that, but truck just went by. But I, I recommend having these on interrupt current sound, which I don't know why I have that off. Probably forgot. But I do recommend you having it on... Because then it will be more efficient, and maybe have a stop on stop on signal connected to the blue pin on the button for the turn on sound. So, whenever it ignites and you turn it off right away, this sound will stop. Similar concept with the turning off noise. So, 
it's just reversed. So the when you turn it on and turn it off, when you turn it off, it gets sent a signal from this blue pin to the red pin on this one. So that's that. And then there's the stop on signal, which if you turn it on again right away, then this output will send this over here, so then it will just stop. And also, here's a big one. The humming noise. You don't need a humming noise, but if you want it to be better experience for players, I recommend having a humming noise. Because we, we all like that hum. So, I recommend having... Sorry, truck. Again, it's like probably a garbage truck, I'm assuming, but other than that... Here's the humming noise. This is connected to the green pin. You need it to be connected to the green pin, but you don't want to keep going when you turn it off. So I really highly recommend having stop on signal connected to the blue pin on the button. So now that's out of the way. Now we have these sounds up here. What are these noises? Well, these noises are... This is the hit noise. These are the dragging sounds and the hit noise. This one's a hit one. This one's play on signal. And when it plays, it only plays once when you, it's on the red pin on this trigger zone here. So whenever it hits something, it plays that noise. And this one should be the dragging one. This one is similar to the humming one, but it's connected to that. So this right here is connected to that currently in zone and you want when it just you see it only does that and you kind of hear a slight in there so whenever you hold it in place you get a nice dragging noise and you can have any dragging noise don't need it but I do recommend having it and here this is stop on signal I you really need it to be right here to exiting zone with the stop on signal. So right there we have that. Now we have the clamp. You need to clamp everything together except this and this. And this, because you can't even clamp that anyways. Those are the three objects you should not clamp. Because it doesn't matter. But it's important you do not clamp this one, otherwise it's going to fall with this, it's going to be off center gonna hit something randomly and it'll play the noise and effects and you don't want that so I don't know if I did the emitters already but if I did I'll go through it again and uh, here we have the emitters you're wondering what these are doing here well it's, it has something to do with these hit things and it's the effect that plays whenever you hit something and it loops as it stays in there when you take it out it should stop. So this emit is just connected to the green pin. Simple as that. And here, that's the point light button. Hilt. You need a hilt. And then this sounds blade. Animation gives the most for the trigger volume. And the boolean chip, that's important for these things here. And now the last part. This. <laughs> You're wondering, what the hell have I put here? Well, I put this here for a specific reason. It's so it can block things. So let's say I wanted to grab this here. I shoot it at this. See, it just goes right through when it's off. But if I turn it on and I shoot it again, you see it blocks it. Now, that one broke so we won't need it anymore. Now we have this. It can basically block anything but swords. So, any projectile it can block. Like, let's say we have firework. You see, it won't block everything, but it blocks some of it. It's really effective. Sometimes it can block everything. It's close enough. You see, yeah blocks everything. It can block any projectile, especially paint. Even though it looks terrible when it hits it, it still blocks, and it's good. 
now we have laser, which is specifically the thing I want it to block. Sadly, it doesn't reflect, deflect or anything. It doesn't deflect any lasers, because I have no clue how to do that. That would take a lot of circuits, or it's just not plain not possible. And then we have arrows. Similar to the paint thing, it looks awful. <laughs> And then we have the snowballs, same as paint. And you see that detects it. And it just hits the thing. You're probably wondering what the hell is this doing here? Welp. There's another thing with this. So let's say you turn it on and you hit something physical like this. You see it it actually did something to it. So you can push physical objects around with this, which is pretty cool. But it doesn't hit you. Now, I wish I could make the trigger volume hit you and objects at the same time, but I don't know how to do that without it glitching out. So, that's the thing I could get to the future. And so, so we have this, and it doesn't detect me. Wish it could, but I don't want you don't want the invisible collision to detect you because otherwise they're going to get pushed away. So, wonder how that works? Well, let's configure this. And we're looking at the invisible collision. You see, I have this off, and it's only on this. And that's very important. Otherwise, you're going to go haywire with it. And last but not least, battling. You see, this is where we this lightsaber comes in. This is just an extra lightsaber that I have lying around over here. I'm gonna turn this one on. And, especially, the thing that I never really intended is actually possible in this. So, like, because since the collisions, the, the volumes can detect each other, this can happen. And I think that's freaking cool. So, I'm gonna keep that. It doesn't happen all the time, like if you swing too hard through it, it doesn't detect, but if you do it slow enough, it kind of does it. So, that's pretty cool. And that's pretty much it on how my lightsaber works. So yeah, hope you enjoyed.